University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Last academic year, at the start of the autumn term, an invitation to apply for University Challenge was sent to over 450 UK higher education institutions. 123 took us up on the offer, of which the best 28 were selected to compete in this year's series. Now only two remain. Between them, they've played 12 matches, scored 2,205 points and answered 329 questions correctly. And after all that, they've ended up right back where they and indeed we started in a repeat of the very first fixture of this series. Now, the team from Durham were the victors in that first encounter and indeed are the only team in the series to have managed to win against their fellow finalists tonight. Since then, they've also beaten the universities of Bangor, Southampton and, at the second time of asking, Royal Holloway. Their average score per game is 170 points. Their average age is 21. Let's meet the Durham team for the final time. Hi, my name's Harry Scully. I'm from Welling Garden City in Hertfordshire and I study physics and chemistry. Hi, my name's Chloe Margo. I'm from Haringey in North London and I study sociology. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Alex Radcliffe. I'm from Edinburgh and I'm studying maths. Hi, my name's Bea Bennett. I'm from Ickham in Gloucestershire and I'm reading English. Now, that first defeat against Durham just seemed to galvanise the Bristol team and kick-start a five-match winning streak against Oriel College Oxford, Queen's University Belfast, Newnham College Cambridge, University College London and the University of Southampton. Their average score is a very impressive 200 points per game and their average age is 21. Let's meet the Bristol team one more time. Hi. My name's Sam Keeler, I'm from Wolverhampton in the Black Country and I'm studying medicine. Hi, I'm Jacob McLaughlin, I'm originally from Gloucester and I'm studying economics and maths. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Tess Richardson, I'm from Reading and I'm studying chemistry. Hi, I'm Alejandro Ortega, I'm from Chaffin St Peter in Buckinghamshire and I'm studying physics and philosophy. Well, you're all old hands at this now, so let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first start of a ten. Built in an unused squash court at the University of Chicago in 1942, Chicago Pile 1 was the first working example... Durham Scully. Nuclear reactor. That's correct, yes, nuclear chamber. <laughs> These bonuses are on a literary genre. The second century Greek work True History, or A True Story by Lucian of Samosata, was intended as a satire of outlandish contemporary travel literature. It is sometimes cited as the first work in which literary genre? Um, any ideas? Satirical, genre. satirical of... Do they say travel? Particularly? Yeah. yeah. Humorism or something? I mean, it's what? not picaresque, is it? P picaresque? Yeah, it could be. Do you want to do it? Just say yeah. it. Picaresque? It's science fiction. Oh. <laughs> Carl Sagan and Isaac Asimov both suggested the 1608 work Somnium or The Dream as one of the first science fiction stories. It is noted for its detailed astronomical descriptions and is the work of which German scientist? 1608, 1608 German. German scientist. Give us some examples. I have no idea. I have no idea. German. Um, no, I haven't got any ideas. You don't know the past. No. It's OK. Yeah. Leibniz. No, it's Johannes Kepler. Oh. Containing an early description of rocket-powered space flight, a 1657 work, The States and Empires of the Moon, is by which author? He's better known as the subject of a play by Edmond Rostand. That's Cyrano de Bergerac. OK. Cyrano de Bergerac. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Which royal figure did the historian John Murrell describe in the following words? Quote, The only one of the Stuarts not to be a visionary, not to have long-term goals, a worldly man with many mistresses, and an intellectual dilettante who took a lively, if spasmodic, interest in the affairs of the Royal Society. Durham Bennett. Charles II. Charles II is correct. Well done. <laughs> These bonuses are on the Turner Prize in 2021. In 2021, the Turner Prize shortlist comprised art collectors in various UK towns and cities. The winner was Array Collective, based in which city? Liverpool. I'm pretty sure it's... Okay. Liverpool? No, it was Belfast. <laughs> Project Artworks 
It's a collective of neurodiverse artists in which South Coast town? From 1901, this town was the home of Robert Tressel, author of the Ragged Trouser Philanthropist. Town. South Coast Lyon Regis? Yeah. I could, I could be. Lime, don't know why. Lime Regis? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Lime Regis? No, it's Hastings. Okay. Finally, also shortlisted, was Gentle Radical, a collective in which city? The jury admired their commitment to the community of Riverside in which they're based, the river, in this case, being the Taff. Taff. Is that in Wales? I, I, I don't know the Taff. I don't know. Why do I want to say it's Liverpool? It's not. That's the Mersey. No, that's no, the Mersey. Not, yeah. um, just give it a whirl. Just give it a whirl. Anything? Oh, no, I don't know. Pass. It's Cardiff. Wales. Ten points for this. I need the name of a domestic animal here. Quote, one the torso bends but does not twist. Two, at the instant of release... Durham Radcliffe. Cat. Cat is correct. <laughs> you get three questions on a family of proteins. The HSP family comprises proteins that are expressed in response to environmental stress. For what do the letters HS stand in HSP? These two letters refer to the rapid exposure to high temperatures that led to their discovery. Heat sensitive? Yeah. That, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Heat sensitive? No, it's heat shock. Wow. Okay. Okay. What five letter name is given to a plant retrotransposin that has co opted the HSP expression pathway in order to multiply under heat shock conditions? In Japanese, this word means hot spring. Oh. Oh. That might be a word like, we, like a Japanese version of geyser. But... Jacuzzi could mean hot spring. It's plausible. I, I would have know. thought that would be Italian, but... Well, oh, no, maybe not. It? Yeah, sure. Jacuzzi? No, it's onsen. Okay. Oh. And finally, the primary function of many HSPs is to assist in the folding of proteins at high temperatures. What name is given to proteins with this function? Oh, they're called... Um... Uh, chaperones. Chaperones? Chaperones. Yeah, I think so. Chaperones. Chaperones is correct. Well done. <laughs> We're going to take a picture round now. For your picture start, you're going to see a map showing the location of a military confrontation and the date it took place. For ten points, I want the name of the royal leader who perished in this conflict. I want a name and either the regnal number or the name of the dynasty. Bristol Keeler. Constantine the Eleventh. It was Constantine the Eleventh. Well done. Your picture depicted the fall of Constantinople in 1453, in which the last Byzantine emperor, Constantine XI, was killed. Your bonuses are three more maps showing the locations and dates of three more battles that claim the lives of royal figures. These are a bit closer to home. In each case, I want the name of the battle and the king who died there. Firstly... So this is going to be the Battle of Flodden and James IV? Yeah. Sure. OK. Battle of Flodden and James IV. Of Scotland, that's correct, yes. Secondly, this battle and the High King who perished there. Um, oh, is this just Battle of Clontarf, Brian Beru? I don't know. Can I nominate? Yeah, you? go ahead. Nominate McLaughlin. Battle of Clontarf, Brian Beru. Brian Beru is correct. Nice. And the Battle of Clontarf. Finally, this one, please. So that's going to be Battle of Stamford Bridge and Harold Hardrada. Did he die? No, it's yeah, yeah it's the Norwegian guy. It's Harold yeah, Hardrada. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Stamford Bridge. Yeah. Harold Hardrada as well. Yeah. yeah. Battle of Stamford Bridge, Harold Hardrada. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. The following words are attributed to which film director? Quote, This morning I met a woman with a golden nose. She was riding in a Cadillac with a monkey in her arms. Her driver stopped and she asked me, Why is it that in your movies there's not even one normal person? His films include Roma, Satyricon and... Darren Scully. Uh, Fellini. Fellini is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on literary criticism. All three answers have three words. What term was first applied in a literary context by May Sinclair in 1918 to describe the novels of Dorothy Richardson? It is widely used to refer to narration that mimics the flow of a character's thoughts. Stream of consciousness. Yes. Stream of consciousness, yeah. Stream of consciousness? Correct. Yes. Secondly, what is the title of Harold Bloom's influential 1973 monograph on intrapoetic relationships? It argues that the history of poetry is best understood in terms of each poet's struggles against the legacy of their precursors. Right, is the anxiety of influence 
I'm not sure if it's then. There's another one. It might be. Is it, could it be that B? I mean, exactly. There's another one, but words. I can't think of anything else. I say an the anxiety of influence. Of influence. Yeah. Influence. The anxiety of influence. Correct. Nice one. Nice one. Well done, B. What now common phrase did Coleridge coin in his Biographia Literaria? It describes how readers process fantastic or supernatural elements in fiction, if written well. Suspense. He glossed it as poetic faith. I think it's suspension of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief. Yes. I think it's that. It makes sense. Yep. makes sense. Suspension of disbelief. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Meanings of what eight-letter word include a procedure for a scientific experiment or medical treatment, a set of rules for exchanging information between computers, the original draft of a treaty... Norman Radcliffe. Protocol. Protocol is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on a new wave band. <laughs> Kate Pearson and Cindy Wilson were among the founders of which new wave band described as mixing kitsch, Americana and some really big hairdos they formed in Athens, Georgia in 1976? I was going to um... say it's Banana Rama, but... It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're 80s, so they could have formed in... Have we got anything they formed, else? They have big hair, so... Do you want to go <laughs> there? Bananarama. Bananarama? That was the B-52s. <laughs> the lyrics of which song by the B-52s name a marine fish with a spine tail and a toothed whale with a long, straight tusk? Its title is the name of a large crustacean. Oh. Well, I thought it was going to be a novel. I was going to say novel, but... Say King, novel. King Crab or something else? A large coconut just crab? Say I'm very confused by this question. Just uh, say an <laughs> It's a crustacean, but I don't know. It's not a... It's not a... It's a mammal. Uh, just... King crab. Well, it's rock lobster. Oh. And finally, what two words are the title of a 1980 song by the B-52s and appear within the title of a later film by Gus Van Sant that stars River Phoenix and Keanu Reeves? Oh, um, My Own Private Idaho, but I don't know if that's... So... Private Idaho, maybe? Yeah, Private I'm happy Idaho. with that. Might okay. with a long name. No, it's two words. No, two okay, words. Private Idaho. Private Idaho? Private Idaho is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> what five letters begin the names of all of the following? A Renaissance palace in Copenhagen, a football club in the Norwegian city of Trondheim, the title figure of a comic opera by Richard Strauss, and in Shakespeare's Hamlet, the courtier who accompanies Guildenstern. Uh, Bristol McLaughlin. Frozen. R-O-S-E-N is correct, yes. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on triangular countries based on the calculations of the British data analyst Tom Alps. By Mr Alps's calculations, which Central American country has a triangularity rating of almost 92%? A dominant physical feature is a lake of the same name. Um, Nicaragua, probably. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Nicaragua. Correct. Only a little less triangular is which European country, independent since the 1990s? Its flag bears a large yellow triangle. It's not Euro Andorra. European has a large yellow, yellow triangle. triangle. Uh, maybe Macedonia or... Yeah, that makes sense. But it doesn't really have a triangle on it. No, no, no. Just say... Just um, no, it's not, it's not, like, it's not triangle-shaped either. Just um, no, it's Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, Herzegovina. Correct. Nice. Two African countries appear at numbers three and four on the list. Both have Atlantic coastlines and both are largely desert. Name either one. Probably Namibia. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, it's not really triangular, um, is it? Cool. I can't remember. Yeah, OK. Yeah. yeah. Namibia? Namibia and Mauritania is the other one. <laughs> yes. Well done. We're going to take a music question now. For your music start, you'd hear an excerpt from a symphony. Ten points if you can name its composer. Darren Radcliffe. Sanson. Sanson is correct. Well done. <laughs> He's all in concerto. You just heard part of his third symphony, which features an organ alongside the orchestra. For your music bonuses, you will have three more orchestral works which make prominent use of the organ. Five points for each composer you can correctly identify. Firstly... Well, the teacher's going to hate how few of these I get. Um... What does it sound like? I'm thinking it's 20th century. It's big brass. So... Who founded the proms? No, it's not that, I don't think. Could it be like... Um... It could be Elgar. Could be. It sounds a bit too modern. But if you want to go for it, go for it. Just go for it. Yeah. Elgar? No, that's Yemachek. And secondly... I like 
like it. <laughs> don't. Oh, I have absolutely no idea. It sounds a bit Germany, a bit angry. It does. It sounds kind of like Cargella, but it won't. Do you want to just say it? Um, Let's go for it. If, you, if it's making you think of someone. Cargella. No, it's Aaron Copeland. And finally... It does sound quite filmy. You could go for it. I doubt it. I doubt it. It is filmy. But do you want to just do it? Yeah. Just do it. Why not? Just try. You good? <laughs> John Williams. No, it was Respi. Ten points for this. In biology, what five-letter word may denote the interior space of a membrane bound? Darren Scully. Lumen. Lumen is correct. Your bonuses are on Notable Faculty of the History of Consciousness programme at UC Santa Cruz. Known for her critiques of US race relations and the prison industrial complex, which activists wrote Women, Race and Class and oh, Are Angela. Prisons Obsolete? Angela Davis. Who is it? Angela Davis. Angela Davis. Okay. Yeah. Angela Davis? Correct. A founder of queer theory, which Italian author and academic writes principally on film, semiotics and feminism. Her works include Technologies of Gender and Alice Doesn't. Italian. Italian. I have no mm. idea. I don't know. I don't know. No, pass. Pass. That's Teresa de Loretis. And finally, a leading member of the Frankfurt School, which political theorist developed the concept of repressive desublimation? He wrote Eros and Civilization and One Dimensional Man. The only Frankfurt guy I know is Theodore Adorno. Adorno. Oh, it, could, Adorno. it could be, yeah. Adorno, yeah. Adorno? No, it's Marcuse. Okay. Herbert Marcuse. Ten points for this. I need you to name a European microstate and a Scottish island here. The two are similar in land area and their names have letters in common. One is in the Firth of Clyde, the other about 120 kilometres south. Bristol McLaughlin. Aaron and Andorra. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on effects in physics. All three answers begin with the same letter. Named after a physicist born in 1770. What effect is the basis of the thermocouple? It creates an EMF when the junctions between two different conductors are maintained at different temperatures. Oh, with Joseph Josephson is what I was That's thinking. Josephson? Yeah. Yep. Josephson. No, it's a Seebeck effect. OK. Named after a German Nobel laureate, what effect causes a shift in spectral lines when samples are subjected to a strong external electric field? The effect can be linear or quadratic. What is it? Stark? Begin with? Could it be Stark? Um, that's an issue. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. it's okay, for it, go Stark? For it. Stark is yeah. correct. Which appropriately named effect describes how alternating current passing through a conductor is mainly confined to a thin surface layer? Um, the small effect, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Small effect? It's a skin effect. Ten points for this. For what did the initials BA stand in the acronym MOBA, M-O-B-A, denoting a museum in Somerville, Massachusetts? Its exhibits include bone juggling... <laughs> Durham Radcliffe. Black art? No. You lose five points. Bone juggling dog in hula skirt and Sunday on the pot with George. <laughs> Bristol Keeler. Baroque art? No, it's bad art. <laughs> Ten points for this. Which European country's national flag consists of three vertical bands whose colours, from left to right, are expressed in the surnames Duffy, Bowie and Flynn? <laughs> Bristol Keeler. Belgium. Belgium is correct. Well done. Your bonuses are on Ignatius Sancho, an 18th century man of letters who was born on a slave ship and brought to England at an early age. Sancho gained prominence when one of his letters appeared in the published letters of which novelist, the author of Tristram Shandy? Uh, Stern. 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 Lawrence Stern is correct. Sancho is the first known black Briton to vote in a British general election. In 1780, he voted for George Bridges Rodney, and which leading Whig abolitionist and adversary of Pitt the Younger? Yeah. yeah. Wilberforce. 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 That was Charles James Fox. Yeah. And finally, in 1780, Sancho wrote a dramatic first-hand account of what major riots in London. They began with protests against recent concessions to Roman Catholics. The Gordon riots. Gordon. Gordon. Gordon riots. The Gordon riots is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. It's a picture starter. 
You're going to see a painting for ten points. Name its artist. Darren Scully. Kandinsky. Kandinsky is correct. <laughs> Improvisation number 26. So we follow on from his abstract depiction of rowers with more bonuses that are three more paintings of rowers. Again, name the artist in each case. First, this US artist. Uh, Thomas Aikens. Thomas Aikens. Mm -hmm. So Aikens. 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 Thomas Aikens is correct. Secondly, this Russian artist. It can't be Kandinsky. Mm. <laughs> what other Russian artists are oh, there? Well, I can think of a realist. Um... Is this, what, 20th century, we yeah. think? It must be. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like futurists, so they started with that, but I can't remember. They're Italian. Um, I think he's German, but Kirchner. Just Kirchner? Say okay. Yeah. Kirchner? That's Goncharova. And finally, this French artist. That's Kaibot. Kaibot. Mm -hmm. Kaibot. Kaibot is correct. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. In anatomy, the choroid coat, ciliary muscles, phobia. Norm Scully. The eye. The eye is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on rocket science. In 1903, which Russian scientist produced an equation linking the change of velocity achievable for a rocket to its mass and speed of its exhaust gases? I think it's Tsiolkovsky. 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 Yep. Tsiolkovsky. Yeah. Tsiolkovsky. Tsiolkovsky is correct. Which US scientist added drag and gravity terms to the equation? And in 1926, he built and launched the first liquid fueled rocket. A Maryland Space Center bears his name. I can think of... oh, Field Space rocket? Center. Um... Is it any particular nationality? I think Braun. Amer American. 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 I think okay. Braun's German, though. I don't know. Yeah, von Braun is definitely in German. Maryland. Uh, who else? It, what, who is Space I know it's before NASA. Either. Like, this is 26. I don't know anything uh, about rockets know. from then. Well, my name is Oppenheimer. It's not that. Come on, let's have it. Pass. It's Robert Goddard. And finally, to the nearest whole number, what is the escape speed in kilometres per second for a rocket leaving Earth? 11. 11? Pretty okay. sure. 11? 11 is correct. Well done. <laughs> Which inland US city completes the title of a 1972 work by the US architects Robert Venturi, Denise Scott Brown, and Stephen Isenour? Learning from what city? Durham Scully. Chicago. No. Crystal Keeler. Kansas City. No, it's Las Vegas. Ten points for this. Also known as Hattusas, Boazkoy in north-central Turkey, is the site of the capital of which... Crystal Keeler. The Hittites. The Hittites is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on philosophy. Of which school of thought did A.C. Grayling write, it is the thesis that mind constitutes the ultimate reality... I need a single word Solipsism. term. Solipsism. Can I nominate you? Yeah. Nominate Ortega? Solipsism. No, it's idealism. <gasps> Which Irish philosopher summarised subjective idealism Berkeley. with the Latin phrase esse es per kippi? Yeah. Berkeley. Meaning to, Berkeley is correct, yes. I treat idealism as untruthfulness, which has become an instinct. Which German philosopher wrote those words in 1888? Could be Nietzsche. Yeah. Nietzsche. Yeah. Nietzsche. Yeah. Nietzsche. Nietzsche is correct. Ten points for this. What environment was simulated in the 1971 psychology experiment at Stanford? Bristol ah, Keeler. A prison. Prison is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on world events in the decade of the Norman conquest of England. OK, 1060s. In 1060, Boleslaw the Generous of Poland helped Bela, the champion, to obtain the crown of what country? Probably Hungary. Bela later died Hungary. when the wooden yeah. structure of Hungary. his throne Hungary? collapsed under... Hungary is correct. In 1062, the Almoravid dynasty established its capital in which Moroccan city, ruling an empire that extended Fez. from Spain to northwest Africa? I don't know. Fez. Fez. It's Marrakesh. In 1063, Alp Arslan became the second sultan of which Turkic empire? Yes. He later captured parts of the Byzantine Empire following the Battle of Manzikert. Nominate McLaughlin. Seljuks. Correct. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. What Olympic track event did John Carlos, Peter Norman and Tommy Smith win medals in in 1968? A much reproduced photograph shows them making or supporting a black power salute at Bristol the Bristol 400 metre? No. You lose five points. Anyone want to buzz? Darren Scully. The 200 metres? It was the 200 metres, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on refrigerants. 
which North American city gives its name to the protocol of 1987 that provides a framework to phase out the use of refrigerants such as CFCs and HCFs? Montreal, yes. Montreal. Montreal is correct. What short name is given to the halo carbon known as refrigerant 12 or R12? Halo carbon, so um, something fl fluoro... It's so be something fluorine, so it's CFC. F fluoro fluoride? I don't know. Come on, let's have it, please. Yeah. Pass. It's Freon 12. Freon. What simple inorganic compound is also known as refrigerant 717? It's boiling point of minus 33 degrees Celsius and high latent heat of vaporization led to its use as an industrial refrigerant. John Bristol have 120, but Darren Lee with us here, 155. It's better, you look as if you're about to burst into <laughs> tears. <laughs> well, it's a great achievement to go, to go, go out in the final, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Well, congratulations to you, Darren. You are the 2022-23 University Challenge Champions. Now, to present this year's trophy is a historian and author whose books have sold more than 15 million copies worldwide in over 40 languages. Born in Sichuan, she worked as a barefoot doctor, a steel worker and an electrician during the Cultural Revolution before moving to the UK to study, where she became the first person from the People's Republic of China to receive a PhD from a UK university. Her family autobiography, Wild Swans, has been called the most read book about China. Please welcome Yung Chang. <laughs> well, were you impressed? Yes, I'm, I'm very, very impressed. <laughs> I'm really, it's very impressed. It's amazing what they know, it isn't is, it? It is, it is absolutely wonderful. I'm, I'm really pleased to be invited here to present the trophy um, because University Challenge was the most prestigious program to me when I first arrived in Britain in 1978. I grew up in Cultural Revolution China when schools and the universities were all closed. Mao said, the more books you read, the more stupid you become. And books were burned across China. And so tonight, I watched um, these um, brilliant black minds at work. And I want to congratulate them all for their brilliant brain. And I do hope that they would use their brain to make our world a better place. I hope so Thank too. You. Now, can I ask you to present the trophy to the captain of the winning team yes. from Dale? Yes. <laughs> so, it only remains for me to thank Yung Chang for presenting the trophy all the teams who've entertained us over the past months, and you for watching. University Challenge returns later in the year, and I look forward to watching it with you. So it's a good night from me. Good night. <laughs>